Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. What are we watching right now? It is the Star Ladder I League Star Series. It's technically Star Ladder Season 13, but they have partnered up with like the I League people and have thrown together a brand new spe season of some epic Dota action. Now, I couldn't help myself. I had not watched that intro at where that narrator dude said LAN and not LAN. Go to the LAN final. I don't know. I'll have to watch that one again. That made me giggle a bit. But here we are. Our opening matchup today, I guess technically is not the opening matchup. Earlier we did get to see uh, the fantastic OD Pixel and Rhyme come together to cast OG going against Navi. But it is technically opening day uh, for stage two of the group stage here. Uh, let me make sure I got my Dota unmuted. Now remember, I'm going to be going out alone today. I'm fairly rusty. Lots of excuses being thrown out at the start of this one, but I hope things are not going to be too shaky in this matchup. But this is phase number two, if you will, Star Ladder. We are in Group A action. This is just the first day of the action. And what a start to the day. OG going against Na'Vi, and they actually will lose the series. Spoiler alert. Sorry if you're just trickling in now, Alliance fans. But OG have finally lost a series. This comes after their epic run at the Frankfurt Major, and we even saw them just steamroll through Dream League where they didn't even take a loss at all. I want to say they're coming off, what, eight straight wins? They were coming into, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, something like eight, eight straight wins, and then they lose to Na'Vi. Unbelievable. And that's supposed to be what many thought possibly being the weakest team in Group A. Group A, if you didn't know, I don't have fancy graphics to show up right now. But Group A is Team OG, Team Virtus Pro, Team Alliance, and Na'Vi. So you got El Clasico in the same group with Virtus Pro. And, of course, the new Too Hot to Trot Team OG squad. As we know, the overweight gorillas. But here they are, now coming from a loss. You know, it's it's due team eventually feels that the pressure isn't there as much as it was for Frankfurt Major. They get a bit laxed, and next thing you know, they drop a series to Na'Vi. Everyone rushes to Reddit to say Na'Vi's back, but we'll have to see if maybe OG are at the start of a tilting phase here or not, as they're going to be going against Alliance. And as we know, Alliance, well, we don't know where the hell they are. I'm looking at their recent match history, and it looks like they got one out of their last ten. They got one win out of their last 10 games. One win for them. They were coming off four straight losses at Dream League and then dropping that series, of course, to Virtus Pro 0-2. Uh, they did get that one win against Cloud9 in the lower bracket, but really the success just hasn't been there. And Alliance fans are waiting and anxious. They want to know, when is Alliance going to get back, goddammit? <laughs> they want to return to the TI3 glory days, but... I don't know how much longer you're going to be waiting here, but maybe they can capitalize on what Na'Vi just left them and maybe a G squad. So let's uh, not wait any longer. Let's actually break down the draft itself here. A lot to talk about. Obviously, OG is one of those teams, and especially for a lot of the European teams, you got to put a lot into the Wisp, and Alliance are not going to give it the respect in first phase ban it. They're going to instead, you know, opt to go for the early tiny steal. So this means OG, they snag up a Wisp Bristleback duo for their opener. And on the side of Alliance, they're going to snag up that tiny, follow with a gyro. So they're already just showing their cores right at the start. And then they get a respectable Winter Wyvern <clears throat> support. So a solid start here. Got to always question, though, how Alliance are going to be with that Alucard Tiny. You never know. They could even pull out the crazy support Tiny. They are on Radiant side, something that uh, has been through the you know public scene a bit, but eventually Secret did whip out of their back pocket when they were facing, you know, going down to the lower bracket. I believe it was against who? Was it Vici? I believe it was against Vici Gaming. And, uh, yeah, Pile I Die pulled out the Tiny. Got those ridiculous pulls mid lane. Eventually had to warrant the respect of the other teams. And, well, it didn't help them get the title in the end, but they did finish second place. And it definitely got a lot of teams percolated a bit, and some of them have been pulling out that support tiny. Now, that same thing can be done somewhat with a Wisp on Radiant or Dire Side and Pudge, but I guess people find tinies very, very useful throughout the whole game. High bursting, you know, combo that once you get a basic mana pool, like something like Arcanes, you can easily offer a lot of burst damage to your team fight. And obviously with the advantage he gives in the laning stage, your core should be able to segue and, you know, put those little support buddies up on their back and carry their way forward. 
Second phase of bands are going to get rid of the Lich and the Dazzle inside of OG. And, oh, I love this pick. But it's a bit weird. We have not seen much Abaddon use, obviously, at all. In recent history, it popped up at Frankfurt uh, in the hands of Ehelm. Captain Lanham uh, had that little back pocket strat where he decided to pull out the Abaddon against the Bane and against, like, a lot of... Uh, Slardars. It helped remove the amp damage. It obviously would remove the sleeps, and he was very good at dispelling, and he proved to be a bit of a nuisance, and it helped eat home, you know, secure a top three finish. They were top three, right? I think they were top three. It's early here. But here, Abaddon, hmm? That's a bit fishy. I guess it helps remove the stun from Avalanche and from a rocket, but... I don't know. I guess it's just for heavy extra sustain. Plus, you already have an IO on your team. Are they trying to pull out some Alliance stuff and pull out the... Okay, okay. All right, I see you now. A Huskar comes up not not very long after the Witch Doctor grab. OG saying, we don't need to get the early Dazzle pick up here to be forced into a cookie-cutter Huskar lineup here. Look at this. They go ultra-defensive here. They're going to have the Wisp, who has great candidates in both the Huskar and the Bristleback here, and a Badden as, like, the extra insurance policy that these cores are going to be able to go out of control. Now, they are both pretty melee-heavy. I know Huskar is technically ranged, but he's he likes to get into the fight a bit. But so does Tiny. So, you know, as long as Huskar... I assume would have to get a BKB at some point. Well, I guess he doesn't really need a BKB. I guess I just worry that Craggy could get up in his his grill a bit. But he's obviously going to be happy to take the team fight here. Now, what do they do to round this out for Alliance? They are a team that could pull out. I mean, Viper was for some reason one of the things that just stood out to me. If you want to help kite this bristle back a bit, and maybe even the Huskar possibly. But then again, you have the Abaddon now, which offers that shield. Could help a bit with the, some of the slow, but Viper Strike obviously would still be a big problem. Interesting stuff here from OG. Definitely uh, Ten seconds remaining. Definitely happy to spread their drafting wings here. Sorry if you're going to see little pop-ups here when I Five switch through. Obviously it shows. All right. Just want to look at recent drafting history here for OG. Yeah, definitely have not seen the Abaddon. This is something maybe they just kind of just fly having a good time. Maybe saw the E-Home games a bit. and or Maybe Miracle was like, I'm definitely feeling Huskar this game. I don't care if we don't have Dazzle. Let's make it work. And Fly's like, all right, sure, dude. But Alliance now looking for the last grab, the Bulldog Hero. Now, Nature's Prophet is out there, technically. Uh, and so is... No Brood. Okay, Brood had been banned out there at the end. So, what do we know Bulldog to also go for? If not Nature's Prophet, the obvious one. Uh, we do have Clockwork, who could help a little bit. He's very good against these melee bruisers who like to get on the inside. So, we could see the Bulldog Clockwork. Um... Oh, he could he could be scary and do the axe, you know, if he's feeling it, ask again, you know, against a Huskar who likes to flirt, live on the edge. Could be pretty good. Hmm. Maybe they're a bit skeptic. Maybe they're like, we gotta get an AA somehow. Maybe we can make a off lane tiny dual lane work and maybe we can creep in an, an AA because that would be god tier at this point. It hasn't been banned out, but it would have been so nice to have against the Wisp and so nice to have against the Huskar. And it kind of shows you now why they picked that Huskar so quick. The second OG saw Alliance commit to those two supports, and one of them is not an AA. Oh, but they do it anyways! They do do it! <laughs> They're like, we got to make an offline setup work. We really want to get the AA, and we do it. <laughs> that's, why, that's why they were sitting there waiting so long. They're like, oh, man, we really want to get an AA here. It would be so good, but can we make it work? <laughs> can we make this work? And they are. Oh, what are they going to do? Alliance, man. Every time I cast their team, they do something so crazy. The last time I sat down and casted an Alliance game was when they pulled out that Loda, <laughs> that Loda freaking Golem, uh, Life Stealer Golem move. Oh, that was hilarious. That that provided a lot of entertainment for me. It was kind of sad to watch, though. Let's be honest. But here they are now, going to be pulling out either the Core Wyvern slash Witch Doctor slash AA. This is going to be an interesting lane setup. I'm sure Fly is even scratching his head now. Oh, that is so funny. That is great stuff. Uh, well, OG now we're going to see the interesting AA pickup. And they got a fear bit, so they're going to get a, okay, Spirit Breaker. A modest Spirit Breaker. This isn't going to change up their lanes, it looks like, a whole lot, but they are going to get someone who could punish someone like an AA if he did want to spend some time alone. 
and try to just boost on the XP and the levels. And it looks like it's going to be a core wyvern here. No, Bulldog is playing the Witch Doctor. Oh, this is just a treat right now. This is just a treat. I'm looking forward to this one, folks, and I hope you are too. It's OG going against Alliance, a best of three. The first time these two teams are going to be going toe-to-toe -to -toe in Stage 2 of Star Ladder Season 13. Should be a jolly one. Cobble Guy, I'm going to be going solo. Sorry about that. Uh, I might be able to get a hold of someone for the next game and hereafter as we do have a following series after this one. It's going to be Vega going against the CIS Rejects. Don't get to cast that team very much, so I'm looking forward to it. Should be a good time. Five seconds remaining. Lots of emphasis on the laning setup here from Alliance, especially. They have pretty flimsy heroes, so it's going to be very interesting to see how they're going to be plotting this one out. So... I don't want to delay too far for him. Already, Ake here going to be TPing to the bottom lane. Wants to scout out if a certain OG offlaner is going to be coming to maybe plant a ward, but will instead just opt for the early plant himself. All right, so this will see if there's going to be any sort of early rotation, in which there will be. OG are going to move as a five-man squad here. They're pretty confident in their level one fight, which, hey, I don't really blame them here. Got a Huskar. You got the Wisp. Early charge from Spirit Breaker, but they're obviously going to see this, and Alliance is like, ooh -hoo. Don't like that. Let me send this back. And, well, I guess we could do some mild introductions here since it is a solo cast after all. The scurrying, oh, oh, second guesses. Loda's like, he's kind of alone, maybe we should go. This is Moon, by the way. You know, if you're confused by the nameplate, it looks like he's changed it, but it's Moon Meander, and here comes No-Tail. And he's going to get the Quill Party started early, and they're trying to figure out who to focus. So they're going to put their focus on the Bristleback, and they're going to be able to take him down. First one to drop is going to be No-Tail, and they're going to get a follow-up, it looks like, on the Moon here. Alliance! Surprise OG with a five-man stack themselves, and they have that power of the Chilling Touch. And it's very, very good. And OG have just lost two heroes here at the start of the game, and it looks like they're going to still have a bit of a tussle here. Oh, look at that sweep in from Carnage, a.k.a. Crit, snags up the rune, but it's going to cost him his own life. Was he able to buy the bottle? He certainly was. So he gets the rune, buys the bottle, says, thank you, nerds. Steps aside. Alliance, though, may have the last laugh here as they're already going to be up 3-0. to zero. What a start already here. And look at this. So S4 is going to be having his tiny in the mid lane. Flies taking place for now, but sure enough, Miracle is going to be the one to take over the lane. And Nuts is going to be heading to the off lane with Bulldog on the Witch Doctor. Bulldog, I repeat, Bulldog on the Witch Doctor. That is something we don't get to see every day. But Alliance very desperate for proper team composition here to go against this Huskar. That they will sacrifice... Uh, Hero, he's probably used to playing in competitive play just so they can make sure they have this AA. So it better pay off here for Alliance. And they already have a pretty nice start. But now we got to see how their lanes may suffer. That head start could be enough, but this uh, Gyro, as you can see, is not going to have the best time. He's going to be dealing with Crit, a veteran on the Wisp, a champion, if you will. He's going to be constantly in the face here of Loda, who's now going to be forced to pull out Little flat hands here and there just to do. But look at this. Look at this. Top lane Moon eating so much damage. He's going to be going down, man. Oh, the chilling touch. And these two ranged are just going to be able to pelt him down with so much damage and fly just a bit out of position. Worrying about the pull. He's not going to be close to help out Moon. And Alliance are now up 4-0. to zero. Very interesting. Still, though, this bottom lane is going very nice for OG, and their mid lane is also going pretty swell here. As you can see, Miracle bullying back S4, the poor Tiny, in a bit of trouble. But now they got the vision. Here comes Moon charging in from base. He gets the bump, and how convenient. He's going to get the bop there at the end, and he's going to be able to take him down. We'll get OG now on the board, and Ake with a haste rune is like, Hi, how you doing there? Steps in, cancels the salve, and is going to quickly flee just as fast. And look at that burn damage, man. That sucks. When you're playing a support and you're going against a Huskar and he hits you with one of those things, you feel like you just lose all of your life. It's just the worst. But OG just happy to get a kill for themselves. And even though they started by feeding away a couple of kills, they still have a very nice laning phase. And this was just the thing I'm just a bit nervous for for Alliance now. Because No Tail is getting a lot. He's 11-4. And, and obviously Miracle's still at the top. 
14 and 5 CS. Way in ahead here. S4, 5 and 1. He's got a bounty rune at least, but he is not having a great time in the lane. And he might need some assistance here. It looks like maybe they made the call out to Nuts. And here comes my Nuts. But first, Moon going to lead in the way. Walks right into an avalanche. There's the toss up combo. And there it is, the early cold feet, and it's going to get the solidify. And with that, they're going to get the takedown, and Miracle will be dropped, and they might get a follow-up here. Moon. Oh, God, Nuts wants it. Oh, he needed one more auto attack. He's not going to get it, but the toss is there from S4. Beautiful job right there. S4, troubled in the laning phase, going to get the assistance from Nuts, and they're going to be walking away with not one, but two kills. Wonderful stuff right there. And Alliance are feeling it right now, but not maybe in the bottom lane. Oh, tethered in. Wisp Ball's out. Okay, though, with the cold embrace, and they turn it around on a no-tail, and they're going to get the kill on the crit. Oh, they will lose Loda, but Alliance are just getting away with murder. Fantastic double takedown in the mid lane. Falls up with the turnaround on the bottom, now top lane. Moon, desperate to try to get the initiative back his way, charges in. But look at this. Beautiful coconut setup into the Maldic. Now the right clicks are coming out. How did you level this Bulldog? He's got two levels into it. It's respectable damage, but... Now Moon, stuck in a corner, turns around, gets the charge, but he gets the help with crit, and now they're going to turn it around, and a convenient bop on the head is going to be able to take down Bulldog right there. Oh, man. Bulldog thought he had it there for a moment. It looked like he did, but... Wiz came back and helped out his buddy. And Miracle rushing on forward here. I'm up. I'm anticipating the straight to armlet build that we like to see at our Huskars is frequent and frankly he's he's on good pace forward here even though he was taken down just previous still ahead thank you Firefox ahead in CS 25 and 5 but look at this bottom lane no tail getting zoned back a bit from the arctic burn of Ake but his purpose is to come and deal with this pull through now Carnage, a.k.a. Crit, shows up and is going to be tethering into No-Tail. No-Tail, going to start stacking up the goose here. Cold Embrace is not going to help you for long. And boop, one more bop, and it's going to be No-Tail who gets the takedown there. And they pull OG back up. Four to Alliance's eight. And while the kills are coming together for Alliance, can't help but feel like it's still OG who are going to be having a more successful laning phase. All right, charge here on the moon, but it does pass through nuts, so they know it's coming. S4 waiting for it. Oh, and a sidestep from moon avoids the incoming avalanche, and now they're going to make their move on the S4. Quick toss back is going to rid of the 8K player, and with the help from Ake, it's going to force OG to second-guess their commitments, and they will tool, turn back and away. All right, so good rotation there from Alliance. is going to get the help. Convenient spot for nuts there to catch out moon charging in, otherwise things could have been a bit disastrous. Oh, look at this Moon on the high ground. Sees Ake coming up, and the two of them, between Moon and Crit, are going to try to get the takedown on Ake, and unfortunately, Nuts can't do much about it. But there is going to be the cold embrace. Rotations are coming in. Or they're heading out, but look who's trying to interfere. It was flying. He gets caught out and taken down. That means Miracle's going to be going down as well. Oh, convenient rotations in from Alliance, and they catch OG in a bad position, split up from each other, and they quickly punish Flying Miracle, who are just trying to intercept the rest of the fight. But now look at this. Bottom lane. S4 gets the jump on the no-tail, but with Crit being around, gets the save. The Paramedic back in action now. Look at this. They're going to be turning around to S4. I think they used all their TPs to the mid lane, so that means they're going to dive on forward and get the kill. But here comes Loda, who just ran down here the old-fashioned way. He's going to get the takedown on a no-tail. Crit going for a TP. Pullback. Nice play from him. Tethers away. Starts channeling the TP. Way out of position, and, well, I don't think Loda had a way to stop him, but maybe if he got close enough, could have had another, you know, rocket barrage and taken him down. 11-5, though, it's Alliance with most of the kills, but as I said before, I don't think they have most of the farm. Helm of the Dom, already complete here. For Miracle. So not straight to Armlet, just, you know, start with the basics here. Just interesting to see OG maybe recognizing their farm potential. Not afraid to back down for any sort of fight opportunities here. How's Loader doing down here? 
So looks like he's going for a standard buildup of drums, but it's not the craziest farm ever. And oh, it looks like they're going to get Bulldog down. Top lane, your Witch Doctor going to be solo. My first missed kill of the game. Expect some of them to be coming out. The Bulldog had been quiet up to that point where he tried to get the engaging kill. And, you know, he's got phase boots. <laughs> He's, uh, he's, he's really building into a core Witch Doctor here. He's got some serious right-click now, so you put that together with the Chilling Touch, and the Witch Doctor hits pretty damn hard, and now he has a Death Ward. I'm very curious to see what he plans on doing. Didn't max out the stun right away. Or not looking to attempt to. And now Alliance, it looks like they're just kind of putting the brakes on any sort of engagements. And they're just like, eh, we got we to gotta catch up on farm. We, we were all over the place there, but I still feel like we're lacking a bit. When your Admiral Bulldog has the highest CS on your team as a Witch Doctor, you know, something may not be right. And it looks like Nuts, his level 6 now, shows off his first Ice Blast in the mid lane. It's going to be a bit of a swing and a miss, it looks like. But... It is something that they can show OG that they have to second guess. Any sort of grouping up is going to be a bit of a disaster if they get caught out with that Ice Blast. Oh, look at this. Fly doing work as a support, building up the stacks. He already pings it out now. A succulent treat, I'm sure, for a Bristleback in the near future who makes his appearance bottom lane. Could, could go farm this stack right after he clears this one out. And if he decides to go, let's say, straight Crimson Guard, he will get that very fast. But it looks like he'll just kind of take care of business in the bottom lane in the meantime and eventually step back for those stacks. Naka needs to get his level 6 too, though. And it looks like they're going to go for it now. All right, and we see no vision here from Alliance. They do not know the stacking's happening right now. Instead, they're waiting to make stacks themselves, it looks like so. All right. We'll see. Bulldog. The bracer for now. I don't know if it's just going to be a reliable bracer or straight to drums or just go straight for the ags kind of a play. Just still very unfamiliar with the whole Witch Doctor thing as a core. But desperate times call for desperate measures when you got to get that AA. Mmm. That's nice. That's nice. Yeah, you can see just like that, his vanguard's going to be pretty much done. Yep. Mmm, lovely. Boom, there it is. All right, wonderful. And doesn't look like anyone's going to be going straight for the mech this game. I mean, do they feel like they really need the mech? You have a, a Baden, you have a Wisp. Maybe they don't feel necessary. Maybe with the vanguard, it's going to be enough for them to come together. Maybe have a smoke or just go on the move now and try to take it to Alliance here. Who's playing a quick game of catch up? It looks like Load is going to be going straight for the Sage here. He's going at the Ogre Club and Belt. And Bulldog would have been just farming all the meanwhile in the top lane. He's level 8 on a Witch Doctor. But he's actually going to depart from this. It looks like they're going to be coming together. Smoke's on Ake. And I think they want to put it to use here. OG heading towards the bottom lane where they have an engagement on to No-Tail here. Toss combo, Maldict, and there's going to be the kill. Bulldog picks up that one, and here comes OG now. It looks like Moon is looking for a target here. Alliance, almost all hands on deck with the exception of Loda, who does have a TP on hand. Uh-oh, Nut spots out. Crit, Crit should be able to tether away. Will do so. Tries to get caught. Gets caught in the avalanche. Tossed in the midway, but they won't be able to finish him off. Moon thinks it's happening, so he's got another strike in. Tries to go for S4 here, but that Voodoo Restoration keeps him alive a bit. He's going to be able to step back. Goes right into a cold embrace. Ake okay, going to keep him well. Ice Blast. Woo! Oh, it does travel through Moon. Hits Crit as well, but they go for a re-engagement here. And Miracle going to get jumped on. Still lives, but does jump to his own demise. And it's Alliance coming out on top of this fight. OG just kind of shoving themselves into a corner here. Moon desperate. And S4 gladly tosses him out onto Crit. Almost enough damage to make it lethal here. Meanwhile, No Teal able to press in, gets the kill onto Nuts. Now we see two paralleling fights here. Loda's at the top while Crit is going to jump over and help his buddy Moon, or No Tail rather, on the bottom. And then he gets tossed on forward. Goes to his own demise, though, from Bulldog. Ake got a self cold embrace, and now he's going to get finished off. No Tail continues to stack up the quills and will charge on it. S4 is going to be forced to TP out, and 
All the meanwhile, Loda is going to get the pick off there on the fly. But as we see, it is No-Tail coming out with a double kill himself. And we'll finish off Bulldog here. And Nuts already back from the dead. Oh, thinks that No-Tail's still back behind the tower, but he's not. And as you can see, No-Tail's actually behind the tower here. And Little Nuts may be in trouble. They might actually go for this dive. Get out of there, Nuts! Oh, no! They've spotted him! And now that means Miracle's going to get the jump. Moon's going to charge on in, and that's going to be a free kill. And, well, unfortunately, Carnage is a bit late to get the uh, earn charges. I'm sure that's what he was there for. Oh, disaster for Alliance. It looked like a promising start, but a long fight. Maybe the priorities were not properly aligned. It just felt like No-Tail was able to just rip through everyone with the... Long-winded fight. Oh, a dive in. A toss back. He gives him to poor Ake. And Ake's going to be going down. Oh, S4, why? Well, gets a Winter's Curse off. And look at that. They're going to be able to get the kill on the moon. Now they move on forward here. And Loda trying to load up here on the Miracle. But here comes Crit getting the save. Miracle's still alive and well, but will be diving into his own death once more. And now it's Crit and company trying to retreat. Alliance looking to make a comeback here. Oh, they get the toss kill, it looks like, onto Crit and Fly, barely alive, trying to run here, shielded up. Can he find a corner to TP out from? No, he can't. Tries to go for the suicide, will not be getting it there, and it's going to be a double kill now for Loda, who is suddenly 6-1-9. and nine. Was one of the few survivors of that previous engagement, and now it's Alliance coming back again. So just as quick as I said it was a disaster for him, it's a, <laughs> a disaster the other way. OG, I guess, just kind of hanging around a bit too long there. And all of Alliance came back with the cooldowns off and ready to go. And they had a party. Middle tower is under attack. Well, we take a look at the graph. And it's not as significantly ahead as you would think. OG had the game in firm control up to that point. I say firm control, but they were only at 1,500 gold. It wasn't even that dramatic, but... And he fights a good fight for Alliance at this point, and, well, there could be one top moon. Going full dive mode here. And we'll need the assistance and drum and move speed from crit there to kind of get them back and away, but I suppose it's all space created for them to take out that tier one tower, and it will be a job well done there. So when we look to the side of OG and you try to look around, see where things are not really going right in a lot of these fights, it's just, you know, it feels like a bit. Miracle is not really being a fearsome Huskar at this point in the game right now. Not as fearsome he needs to be, but really where he's kind of fallen behind a bit is being a dominant raid boss. You have No Tails Bristleback, who is getting jumped right now. Uh oh, look at this! Avalanche toss. They got the uh, Ice Blast combo. Maldict, he's going to be done for. Oh, he goes back to base. But that Ice Blast was there, and I think it's only level 1. So it's going to come off. They're going to get healed up, and they may re-engage here. Miracle's going to come in with the dive, but they quickly turn back on him with a call down, and they're going to get the quick kill before even the help can show up. They're going for crit. They're going to take him apart. Leaves No-Tail stranded, while Moon is going to be committing in for the back lines, trying to get a hold of S4, but they quickly turn on to him. And while they may be able to bring him down, look at No-Tail. He's getting the charge on the Loda here on the bottom part of the screen, and he's going to get the finish. No-Tail... He's the real raid boss here. You may have got Miracle down, but he's the problem. And as you can see, he's a big one. Oh, Bulldog does have a TP. He's going to be able to make it back and away. But now Blue Moon back in once more. Buyback for him as they commit on in for Ake. S4 is going to interject. Gets off a nice little stun to slow them down. But it doesn't matter. No tail. Going to get the kill anyways. He's 8-4-1 and one on this Bristleback. And it looks like he's going to be able to finish off this Tier 1 tower. And he wants S4. S4 is going to have to try to step back, but he doesn't have the stun. Only has the toss. There's the stun, but it's too late. And they're going to get another kill. It's another double kill. This one for No Tail. Look how freaking tanky this guy is, and he only has a Vanguard and a pipe. Did he just buy some stuff? Oh, my goodness. Look at all these toys he's got coming, too. Oh, OG are just really back in, back in right now. And Moon is just kind of being the bouncer at this point. Kind of gets in the face of Loda. Bumps elbows a bit, but really the rest of his team are doing Roche right now. And that's a Crimson Guard now done. As if No Tail wasn't big and tanky enough before, now he is just a Goliath. I don't know, Alliance fans. I don't know. 
They're looking to try to set something up, though. They're smoked up. They don't even have Winter's Curse yet. Still 10 seconds here. Bulldog got the mech. It's level 11. But I don't know. Oh, Miracle's like, screw your satyr. That's mine now. Uh. All right, easy 84 gold. Finally got that armlet mid lane. They're trying to make a go for no tail and the ice blast. I don't know if it properly connects. It looks like they're going to get fly with it. It did not connect on the no tail though. So he's going to pop his Crimson Guard and OG are going to go on the assault here. Alliance have got to get out now. Go, go, get out. They're thinking about fighting by the tower though. They're thinking about it. They turn back. They're going to get the stun from S4. Can he toss him back? He can. It's not very far, but it puts him onto Bulldog here. And now Crit shows up and Miracle says, I'm going to come aid my buddy. You may have bullied me all game long, but I'm coming for a fight. And they might be able to get Miracle here. They will. That's only the Aegis, though. No Tail continues to thrive on this long-winded fight. The Quills continue to stack here. And he is not taking much damage. They're going to turn back for Miracle now. They might be able to get him. Crit will not be able to help him. The Ice Blast was there. But No Tail continues to be a problem in the back lines. He's going to go for Bulldog now. Now S4 is going to get the finishing blow. Finishing off Crit now. Can the four of them force down No Tail here? He's going to run. Cold Feet. Nice time on the stun. He's going to get solidified in the... Boss will finally go down. It's a triple kill for S4. He suddenly has 2,500 gold. If he was waiting for a blink, he certainly got it now. My goodness. 33, 3,400 gold swing there for Alliance. What well, was a bit of a hot mess of a fight. Turns into their favor. Man, they could have just kind of taken a real bad fight right around here. But they were smart enough to get the one. They, they recognized right away they weren't going to be taking down No-Tail properly. They took another kill instead and stepped back. And they waited for proper cooldowns and positioning, and the Lions are going to be rewarded with a nice team fight. So good stuff. And a little Loda here. Stepped up for a Helm of the Dominator, has a Sange, and will probably be building into a, an S and Y, I imagine. Really, though, is not going to be offering a lot. They have a lot of burst. I just fear, as time goes on, OG are going to be able to withstand that burst. And when round two comes into play, Alliance are going to be left a bit weak and wounded here. Look at this S4 not opting for the blink. Goes for the Shadow Blade buildup on his Tiny. We don't get to see that one very often, but... Here it is in raw form. And now Alliance smoke up. Here they go. And they see no tail. Ha! Here's a hit. There's a stun. Okay. Oh, I understand why he's going for it. He's going for the... Okay, I got it now. Well, Crit's going to pull out and get the nice save. He's about to pop. And he will make it out. I mean, obviously now, didn't even think twice. Silver Edge, of course, going to be the, the reason S4 is going for that Shadow Blade. Obviously, will help against both the Huskar and Bristleback. More so for the pesky Bristleback of Bristleback. So It's a bit off the beaten path for your Tiny here, but they're going to look to make it work. But it's OG right now feeling confident. A DD up on the No-Tail, and he's going to start being the battering ram here for his team and do some work. And where he can't, Miracle's going to step in and try to get some assault damage onto this Tier 2. And Alliance are just going to try to pinch and poke from afar, hoping for a proper setup here. But they're spread. Fly dropping down. They have sentries. Oh, no. He's trying to creep into the mid lane. Gets the toss-up combo. Miracle in trouble. Cold and Feet is there. Crit's going to try to save him, but the, you know, Ice Blast is going to be too much. And now look at this. They get a turn on the No-Tail now. And No-Tail's wondering where the team is. The team is busy trying to revive up Miracle. Miracle looking to re-engage, but No-Tail already goes down. But they are going to still get the kill on the Loda. Loda's going to be forced to buy back. S4 gets off a nice two-man stun. Looking to retreat back. Gets the toss. Moon. Oh, thinks twice about that nether strike. Doesn't like it. Steps back and away. Gets the help from Fly. Goes into Glimmer Cape and will be alive and well. They turn back. Nuts goes down. Nuts buys back. And here's Loda. Back from the dead. And OG. Don't know if they saw a ghost or what, but they got a turn back and away. There's the stun from S4. Followed up with the cold feet. And it looks like they may get Miracle down. They try to keep him alive, but it's not going to be happening. Plus the death war now from Bulldog is going to help finish off what looks like possibly the rest of OG, but no, Fly are going to be able to make it away with that last second TP alliance. It does cost them a couple of buybacks there. But they want to have the final say. They, as you can see, they don't really get a huge economy boost from it at all. Maybe a bit of an XP gain, but... 
It did cost them a lot and does not look like they're going to be able to follow up that nice fight with any sort of objective push. No Tail is already back, held this tier. They haven't even taken a tower yet, for God's sakes. Oh, what's happening here? A lion's getting jumped from the backhand side. Crit! A man on a mission here. Well, they're going to get the kill, it looks like, onto Ake, but they will lose their Wisp. They now know that there is some sort of crazy ward happening here, and Nuts is going to be taking it down, and... Oh, now he'll see it. Okay, now it makes sense. He's like, how'd they see us there? And I assume that meant Moon charged in, Crit showed up, got the kill onto Ake, and they knew something was fishy. They, they saw that the ward wasn't up here, and they figured if it wasn't up there, it had to be here, and that's where they spot it, and they take it down. Yeah, I'm just explaining it for all the newer Dota players out there, not for myself. As for Shadowblade in top lane, he wants to make a go on to Miracle here. Bulldog's here. There's going to be the first Coconut. Can he get the RNG? He certainly can. It's going to bounce back. Maledict combo. Ice Blast is a cherry on top, but it will not be necessary. A good and easy clean kill onto Miracle. Bulldog is going to be picking up that one. And look at that. Wouldn't you know it? He's got two of his four components for his Agnum Scepter. And Alliance trying to get their first tower of the game. We'll see if they can do it. In the meantime, what are OJ doing? They're pushing down bottom lane a bit. Looks like uh, a Sange. Possible S and Y's in order here for No-Tail to progress his late game bristleback. Oh, fly. Has to pop the shield. Pops his ult to avoid the stun. Nicely done there, but could still be in trouble. They try to time it out, and they will. Toss is there, and a few punches to the back of the head, and S4 is going to get the takedown there on the fly. Try to make him work for it a bit, but in the end, doesn't even matter. S4 is getting pretty big here. Sorry, guys. I'm catching up some stuff. I wanted to make sure all the audio is, is good. It sounds like the game might be a bit low, which, you know, I can obviously easy fix. So I'll just bump it up just a few notches there. I don't want to overpower the game, but here we go. Mid lane. Alliance still looking to siege some more objectives here. They took that tier one top lane. Now they want the mid, and OG don't want him to have it. Moon cancels out his charge, and uh, we'll wait in the dark still. Oh, goodness. I forgot to change the net worth in time, didn't I? Yes, I did. I forgot. I set that rule before. If you don't change it by 10 minutes, people will freak out. I waited to 25 minutes. Oh, you guys must have been going crazy over the net worth. Oh, relax. Listen, guys, if you can't tell how the game is going based on net worth without having to see the graph, then you know what? Maybe that's something you need to work on. <laughs> but as you can see now flopped over, it is going to be no tail still king of net worth and by a good margin as well. S4 and Lodo will be following up as the 1-2. But OG with better map presence here. Trying to retain control around the Roche pit so they can maintain the Aegis for him. I think both teams recognizing that the Roche is going to be up soon. The Alliance really don't want this Tier 1 to be standing. It is such a nice tower to have when you're contesting Roche. So they are going to do all they can. They might catch out Nuts, who is on his own here. Oh, they're not going to look to engage. Now the Tier 1 will be going down. More tension on this Roche. Oh, they are flirting with each other right now. And OG would love to get an early start. And Alliance would... Love to have the initiative themselves and probably be in a better map position. Oh, S4 actually has the Sage complete here. He's very close to that Silver Edge. I'm sure they would love to have it complete before the next fight, but they may not get that wish here. Oh, stun, miracle, quick shield. He's going to be fine, but look who's already getting things started here. No Tail dances in a bit. Pops off some early quills. We'll soak up the Maldict, and they step back and away. It's just more of that footsie play from both these teams. Neither one really looking to commit while they both wait for the big boy Roche here. They head back down that way. 
And with that new ward planted from nuts, they will see OG are in the area considering it. Aha! Nice centaur you got there. And Miracle just snagged that one up. And he's like, now that's my centaur, and he's going to be my watchdog. Alliance not happy about it. They want their dog back. But, ooh, okay, they're going to get a quick move in. And Moon charges on for Ake. Oh, the avalanche going to be missing there from S4 as they quickly step back. Toss up and out. A clear disengagement here from Alliance. The call down is going to also be a zoning call down here. And that with that, OG are like, you know what? Let's do Roche. They don't have call down now. Is that going to be enough, though? They still have Ice Blast. S4 obviously will have a new combo. Ake still has Cold Embrace. This is still kind of sketchy here for OG. It's just, This is a big fight right now. The winner of this fight could just kind of dictate the rest of this game. Look how preserved. OG just kind of way in the back waiting out. Moon is going to be the one to kind of pull the trigger while No-Tail sweeps up the back. Ice Blast on the Miracle. A lot of attention onto him. He is going to get relocated back and out, but it looks like he could be going down regardless to the Ice Blast. They are going to be finishing off nuts. It looks like Miracle actually still alive back at the base. He's going to be fine. And oh no for Alliance. That means the rest of the support staff going to be going down here. And Bulldog and Loda on the run now. Moon. Oh, is going to see Loda, but doesn't want to go for him instead. It's poor Bulldog here. Oh, boy. Yeah, there's nowhere you can go, buddy. Ah, boom. All right, he is done for. And that means OG can safely step back and do the Roche. Oh, man. Pinnacle fight, as I said. Oh, well, oh S4, what are, you, what are you thinking right now? Oh, he's not going to have it in time. I was going to say met Silver Edge his way in there. Through a Sentry Ward and Prey? That's not happening. And with that, OG will take their Roche. Miracle will take his Aegis. And they will take a firm position in this game. Probably doggy style. Because Alliance, oof, it's looking rough right now. We'll see, though. Frantic mode farm coming in here for Loda. Desperate for what looks like a BKB at this point. Hey, might get a setup on the fly. Nice. Ice blast. Stun. Toss. Boom. Done for. No borrowed time. No nothing for you, boy. S4 Papa's going to take this one. And before Moon can make any sort of appearance, he's going to head back to base and make it officially a hit-and-run job that we have all just witnessed. Still don't feel that great for Alliance here, but... We'll have to see what kind of measures they're going to be taking. Because now you're looking at a miracle who you'd punished for many a time. Now farmed up suddenly. He's got the Heaven's Halberd now. And as you can see by his positioning here, they have the Aegis. Probably want to use it and breach some Tier 2s here. OG just kind of waiting for the signal here. But maybe Alliance dancing their way through. I thought maybe it was going to be a bait at first for a certain squad, but that's not the case. Everyone's heading to top lane, though. Alliance and the whole party here. OG first on the scene. Well, Alliance looked to set something up. Nuts like the quarterback here. He's he's pulling back. Hoping that S4 can get the setup. Will he shoot for it? They're thinking about it. Oh, the stun! It's going to be a bit of a whiff! Oh, Ice Blast is going to be a whiff! Oh, the disaster! Run, Alliance! Run! What have you done? You have angered the beast, OG. And they will punish you. How dare you use those spells? Ake's even desperate. Plants down the Winter's Curse. Please don't do this. Oh, they can't. S4 is going to get caught out. Lands that stun as he catches it onto all of them, but they quickly swarm the Rock Man, and they will pull him apart, mash him down into a clay puddle. Oh, no. That did not go according to plan for Alliance, and unfortunately, they have been punished for it. Oh, Loda. Did he just try to TP and cancel it? Uh-oh. All right, well, apparently the game sound is still not optimal. Radiance top tower is under I mean, I hear it pretty good, but I could turn it up even more. That's not a problem, guys. Just don't be so hostile about it, okay? Tier 2 going to be going down now for OG. And what has started as a bit of a trickle here for Alliance is quickly cracking apart. 
After they obviously really wanted to have a good fight and take the Roche for themselves. They dropped that fight and a bit of an opportunity there at the top lane. And unfortunately, that means that OG are in a more dominant position than they once were before. Looks like no tail is going to be going for I imagine being an AC. Supports are starting to get some items together. It looks like a Vlad's is going to be the next stop Radiant for Fly. Toss back and doesn't stop fallen. the tier 2 from coming down. And already Alliance have got to be plotting out their high ground defense. And, you know, if, if they don't have a whole lot, Radiant's at least they got a decent high ground defense. Attack. You got Call Down. Got a great Winter's Curse, which scales beautifully into the late game. Death Ward. But from the perspective of OG, they're starting off their group stage run with a, a drop series to Na'Vi, who some may have considered, you know, one of the weaker teams in this group when you put them next to, like, Alliance, Virtus Pro, and, of course, OG themselves. They already drop a series against them. They can't really afford to drop any other series. They want to help secure a spot to go into the playoffs and then one step closer to the, to the land. Radiance bottom tower has fallen. And with that, that means that OG are going to be clearing out all three tier twos. Looks like Alliance just kind of accepted the fact that that was going to be happening with the benefit of that Aegis here, which will be expiring soon. And then it's on OG whether or not they want to look to take a fight and they feel like they are grossly more farmed, which based on net worth, they are pretty heavy-handedly farmed over Alliance right now. Or if they want to wait it out for the next Roche, get the Aegis and finish off the job. And we're seeing more or less the same thing. Alliance need to continue to prep and farm up what they can for what may be a final hurrah of a high ground defense. They obviously can't dictate the game at all. OG are in control. They control most of the map, so they are going to starve them out on farm potential. And we'll have to see if Alliance want to do the YOLO road and just kind of smoke themselves out and try to find an opportunity for an opening and take a big net worth swing or go for a strong... High ground defense, and hope that they can stop OG from kind of finishing them out here. It is the best of three after all, so it's not a one-and-done kind of a deal. Alliance will have a chance to bounce back. Here they come, though. They're creeping in. They want to make a go here. They're going to cross right through Fly. He's going to get borrowed time off immediately, and Miracle makes his move. S4, they quickly converge. And he's going to get relocated out from the wonderful crit. And because of that, it looks like Alliance are not going to really have the gung powder to take off in this fight. And they have to quickly pull back and away. Another failed attempt to try to make a jump onto OG. But they have the power to pull back and away. And Alliance will be coming up short. BKB's down. Call down is now on cooldown. This is OG now charging down this mid lane. Alliance just frantically pushing out those side lanes, seeing if they can relieve and any additional pressure from possibly coming in, but they know that Doom could certainly be on the way. Here comes OG now through this mid lane as they're sieging in for a tier three. Any little pinch and poke they can here on the no tail. Early Maldict, Rockets toss, but he's going to get healed up now. Tier three already getting very low. S4, toss back on the no-tail. Do they have the lockdown, though? They don't. So they can't keep him inside the base, and he will gladly walk out and away. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. All right, another toss back. This time, Crit's going to step in to help, and, well, they're not going to get caught out with any sort of stun. Tier 3 is going to be taken down. Rax is exposed, and we'll have to see if Alliance are going to be holding or not. I fear for the latter here is OG. Just seem to be too strong at this point as they begin to chunk through these racks. A glyph to try to slow them down here from the side of Alliance, but here they go. There's a stun in. The Ice Blast is going to be out. They're looking to make it go into Miracle. He does not have an Aegis, and 
He will just step back it away with help from Crit. Has a Satanic still ready to go for the next fight as No Tail will just kind of sweep in instead. And Alliance will divert all their attention now from Moon, trying to get a hold of him. They can't even grab him. He's going to get healed up from Fly. They turn on the Fly instead. Fly pops borrowed time. They can't go for him. They change targets once more and go for No Tail. They unfortunately can't get the finish off into anyone. In all the meantime, this means Miracle can sweep in and finish off both sets of racks. And OG will walk away here. Will Alliance chase them out for one final hurrah? They're thinking about it, but it doesn't look like they're going to have the manpower to do so. OG will walk back and away. Heads held high. Roche already up. They can simply walk in there and build up a new Aegis. And they'll be able to pull out probably some closure to this game. Get the hell out of their nuts. And back to the base they go here. Alliance going to be stuck on their very tight leash. And can't really afford to stretch out too far. And Moon, what is he building up here? Fancies his own silver edge. And has an ulti orb. Looks like Miracle just bought. He's going to go for what looks like a heart. He's got a Reaver on top of his Satanic. 3k life for an 8k player. Double Vlads, you know, classic double Vlads, just in case, you know, Fly goes down. They have crit with his own. His team notorious for their mind game item bills, as we saw at Frankfurt. But now it's Roche time here. And S4 is going to be the early scout, but I don't know, guys. Nuts is going to lead off. They'll get an Ice Blast in there. Roche still takes some time. They scout it out. Miracle's not going to be able to make it out in time. They're going to see the Sentry. They know the Vision is there, and S4 still continues to dance around a bit, trying to get in their head. They'll drop a High Ground Ward to get some extra Vision, but Moon is charging in now. Gets the bump. But it's not going to stop him from doing the Aegis. There it goes down. Crit's going to grab the Cheese. Miracle's going to grab the Aegis. And OG now are going to be going on the move. And Alliance need to get the hell back to base before they get caught out here. And it looks like it could happen nonetheless. He tries to slow them down. Glimmer Cape. But Ake. Oh, he's not going to be so lucky. The charge is already coming in. Alliance may need to take a fight. They don't want to. Otherwise, they risk losing the Wyvern. And he will go down. That means no Winter's Curse. And now S4 is going to be caught. And it looks like this could be the beginning of the end here. They do get the quick kill, though, on the Miracle, costing him his Aegis. And Moon now has to soak up a lot of the damage. Now they will be able to take down S4. They turn their attention onto Loda. The Gyrocopter will be slain. And OG sweep through the whole Alliance squad and now will push on into the bottom lane. This is the final hurrah here for Alliance as they pull out their last three buybacks. Miracle will already go into the Tier 3. This is it. Moon now moving in. And, oh, poor Bulldog will go down without even getting a Death Ward off. But nonetheless, OG still with their eyes on the prize. Put their focus in. Cheeky little toss back here on a no-tail. Ake comes back, gets the curse right by the fountain, but it's still not enough. And Crit even pulls him back to fountain just in case. Mirka says, I'm happy to stand and fight. I got a, I got a Reaver. I got a Satanic here. And I'm just going to take down these nuts. And here comes back Crit, and they're going to get another kill. And this is OG's game one. And Alliance probably already thinking about what's going to be happening in game number two here. OG continue to be a very tricky, tricky kind of a team here to draft against. Obviously, they let the Wisp through, but Alliance were put in a bit of a pickle in the drafting phase. Put so much value into getting an AA on their team that it left them with... Uh, three Intel supports. And OG just kind of taking advantage now. Never say die, though, from Alliance here. Look at this. Two racks down, and they're like, we're, we're still going to fight you. Double rocket here. A lot of hate for Miracle. S4 looking to make his move in. Charge. Nuts. Does he have Ice Blast? He does. He's going to connect. Miracle's in trouble here. 
And Miracle is going to go down. They slay the Huskar. And he's got 70 seconds on the sidelines here. And they see Fly now. S4 moving in. That's Silver Edge. Doesn't need it right now. Gets the toss. And oh, body block, body block. None of his other team is coming. They're dealing with Crit here, who is apparently... Oh, he's going to get spotted. Coconut's going to stop that. And Alliance are going to be able to sweep in and get the takedown of the Wisp. But look what's happening up here. S4 continues his charge. Almost gets Fly down. But they can't quite finish him off. Nuts is going to be able to slow him down with the Ice Vortex. Oh, he doesn't go up. Oh, but they get the vision. They get the toss. Oh, he loses the shield. Pops a new one. Ice Blast and everything just for the kill here. Alliance are still fighting. But now No Tail has showed up. And that means the party may be over. Oh, yeah. Moon just gets the linebacker charge. But look at this Winter's Curse. Suddenly Ake shows up. And they're going to get the kill. Onto Moon. A buyback from Fly is going to be in order. Death Ward committed from Bulldog, and No Tail's gonna have to sidestep that Death Ward. Now he looks to charge in, and Bulldog could be the one in trouble. Gets the Glimmer Cape, sidesteps away, but Ake might be the man left behind here. Trying to fly to the high ground, not gonna be happening. Gets taken down. <laughs> the Lions are still fighting, man. They still want to keep playing. Doesn't matter if they're two racks down. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Suddenly, No Tail showed up to the top lane here while Loda is around, and he has no TP. And this is going to be just a solo pickoff here for No Tail. Oh, unfortunate for him. He went to that top lane to farm, and No Tail just happened to be TPing right on in there, and he will go down. And now OG already back inside the base. They know that Loda has no buyback, and that this is just very well could be over. Last set of racks now in Jeopardy. Alliance can't really offer a lot. The curse is on cooldown. Ake Wyvern's dead. It's only S4 nuts with his Ice Blast and Bulldog with 10 seconds to go on his Death Ward. That stand between OG just finishing out this game and taking game one. All right. Go, Alliance. Go. What can you do? Bulldog drops his ward, and he just gets crushed right in the corner. And then they make the move on the nuts. He's going to get killed. S4 is like, I'll try my hand, and... Quickly regret it. They try to Silver Edge away. Somehow makes it out from trouble, but Ake's not going to be so lucky. He will go down. Still with the last set of racks. And OG will have Mega Creeps, and they will take game one. Alliance have called it. All right. OG back in action now. They dropped their previous series to Na'Vi, but they're looking to get a good, strong turnaround now as they take game one against Alliance. But as I said, it is a best of three after all, so... Yeah, it might be easy to kind of point out that the, the draft certainly didn't go the way Alliance had expected. They were stuck in a, in a bit of a rut there with their last pick. If they were going to opt in and go for the AA, it was just too succulent of a treat when you're going against a Wisp and a Huskar. But that does force themselves to be in a bit of an awkward five-man draft. So with that, OG kind of capitalized. They get the draft they kind of were planning on from the get-go, and they make it work. So. Now I'll wrap up game number one. We'll cut to a small break, and when we return, it's going to be game two of Alliance versus OG. I'm Coddle Guy. Thank you so much for coming by and hanging out, and we'll see you soon.